don't mind when based on a true story movie skip a few details here and there in order to make more coherent tales. But it's a different story when they rewrite history and completely screw up an innocent person's entire life, all in the pursuit of adding a few paltry minutes of compelling drama for the popcorn hounds. Sadly, it happens pretty often. For instance, 5. American Hustle tells the story of lovable con man Irving Rosenfeld, who finds himself working for the feds, to expose political corruption, while also handling his wife Rosalind, a drunken, cheating, utterly insane bitch from hell, or in Irving's words, the Picasso of passive-aggressive karate. But actually, names were changed to protect one innocent, and a bunch of scumbags, but American Hustle was inspired by the real Operation Amp scheme, in which the FBI used con artist Melvin Weinberg to investigate political figures. Now, he did have a wife in real life, Marie, but she was in truth a dedicated mother, and a good woman, who felt humiliated by Mel's infidelities, and wanted to divorce him. She was essentially the exact opposite of what we saw on screen. 4. Dallas Buyers Club, Cowboy Ron Woodruff is diagnosed with AIDS and given only a month to live. So he bribes his way into a clinical trial for AZT, the first HIF AIDS drug approved by the Food and Drug Administration, despite the FDA knowing full well that it's toxic to the human body. But actually, AZT is perfectly safe and does in fact fight HIV if you get the dosage right. The problem was that, back then, we still didn't know what the right dosage was, which was why they were doing clinical trials in the first place. As for the drugs Woodruff was getting his hands on, they simply didn't work. We know now that peptide T is absolutely useless in fighting HIV, while DDC can have even worse side effects than AZT, like irreversible nerve damage in your hands and feet. 3. 571 tells the story of a daring U.S. Navy crew attempting to hijack a damaged German U-boat and steal their Enigma machine. Through pure American bravado, the sailors manage to secure the machine and kill a few dozen Nazis, for good measure, before retiring to shoot bullets into stakes and ride bald eagles straight into an exploding fireworks factory. But actually, the movie was based on a real story, that of the German sub U-110, which was indeed captured by British sailors. Shockingly, movie jacking an important British military victory didn't sit well with the UK. A parliamentarian from Horsforth, a town that raised money for the ship that helped take down U-110, voiced his protests to President Clinton in a personal letter. And, oh yeah, Prime Minister also publicly condemned the film. 2. Foxcatcher tells the story of two Olympic wrestlers, Mark Schultz and David Schultz, who are invited to train with John DuPont. DuPont ends up killing David, partially because he was kind of a new job, and partially because he blamed him for driving Mark away. See, it's heavily implied, if not explicitly shown, by the movie, that DuPont was a predator who pushed Mark into a sexual relationship. But actually, the real Mark Schultz served as an advisor on set and asked to have the gay molestation implications cut because he and DuPont never had that kind of relationship and he found the inaccuracies insulting. But the director decided to keep them in, explaining that they were meant to give the audience the feeling that DuPont was encroaching on Mark's privacy and personal space. 1. In the imitation game, Commander Alastair Deniston reluctantly oversees a project to decipher Germany's Enigma machine. See, back during World War II, the idea of fighting the enemy with math seemed a bit silly to heartless military men like Deniston. That's why the brilliant mathematician Alan Turing has to all but force his way onto the Enigma team. Deniston has so little faith that he orders Turing's code-breaking machine destroyed, 
and Turing fired, in the hopes of using Great Britain's resources, for something more realistic, like asshole seeking missiles. But actually, the real commander Deniston was a cryptologist himself. During World War I, he worked for naval intelligence, helping to break the Zimmermann telegram, a secret communication between Germany and Mexico, which contributed to the U.S. joining the war effort. He not only understood the importance of code breaking, he sought out Turing for the Enigma team. If the movie was realistic, the first meeting between Deniston and Turing wouldn't have been two adversaries facing off, but a circle jerk of nerd appreciation. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you can get notified when I put out new videos.